<laughs> Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we're going to talk about the 2019 Silent Siren Telecaster. This is a Made in Japan exclusive guitar for the guitarist and singer of the band Silent Siren, hence the name. <laughs> so if you don't know who Silent Siren is, kind of like me, I had never heard of the band, but I fell in love with this pure white Telecaster that I had to illegally import one of these into the United States. <laughs> So Silent Siren is a female J-pop band. They consist of four ladies. There's a drummer, a bass player, a keys player, and then the lead singer slash guitar player. That's right, this lady does it all. And they're pretty popular in Japan, but I listened to their 2015 album and some of their singles. I noticed there's a theme of lots of octave chords really driving the songs. It's probably because she has to sing and play the guitar at the same time that you have things like that. And then occasionally they throw in these funky bass lines and fills that just make you smile. But just kind of light and sweet music would be the best way I could sum it up based on what I've heard. There's a really good energy to it and they're actually pretty good live. If I had to suggest just one song for somebody that's new to them to listen to, I'd go with Fujiyama Disco. I enjoyed that one. And in 2019, Fender honored this band by giving the guitar player singer their own signature guitar and the bass player her own signature bass. And these were part of Fender's 2020 lineup that set out to give signature guitars to female artists because Fender did all the research and they were shocked to find out that half of all new guitar players were girls. So they were trying to capture that new demographic. We'll review this one in a separate episode though. So this is the signature guitar of Yoshida Sumire, also known as Sue. Before she even formed this band, she was actually an amateur fashion model, but design just must be in her blood because look at this beautiful Telecaster. As I said before, I didn't know anything about the band, but this is a beautifully designed thing. It is pure white. And that has to be the most striking thing about this thing because not only is the guitar's body white, I mean, that's common enough to find, but the back of the neck is white, the face of the headstock is white, and even the fretboard. So that means this guitar can join the ranks of other all-white guitars. The Supreme Stratocaster, you've got the Snow Falcon, the unreleased Snow Horse, Matt Hafey's Snowfall. There's so many really cool all-white guitars, I knew I had to document this thing. But the one thing that makes this guitar different from all those other pure white guitars is this one still has inlays on here. They're super colorful, it matches the color of the pinstriping. But this is actually based off of a 60s thin line Telecaster, but with some modifications to it. So instead of the regular Tele bridge that has that plate and you have the pickup within that, they've just given it kind of what you'd normally find on a cheap Stratocaster <laughs> or Telecaster, and it strings through the back here. And then we have a Fender humbucker in the bridge position. So this is kind of like uh, a very strange Telecaster. Usually you either have two humbuckers or you have the humbucker up here in your traditional Tele bridge pickup. So this is just kind of something all on its own. Now on top of that, check out this pin striping. It has an F hole, but is this guitar actually semi hollow? I'm not 100% sure. That was one of the big draws for me to buy this because I wanted to tear it apart and find out. Did they just paint an F hole on here and not chamber it? So we'll have to find that one out on the workbench. But as far as my first impressions on this thing, absolutely beautiful guitar. It is pristine and white, but at the same time that's bad because any black smudges or any dust, anything just shows up on this guitar. It was a real hard time making sure that the B-roll shots were nice and clean for this guy. It would have been nice if these guys could have came with a case, but it's just a very cheap basic Fender gig bag. I just used a nice case for the B-roll shots because that blue really complemented this pure white finish. And the fact that this was a Japanese exclusive guitar and you can't get them in the United States just made me want this guitar even more. But I'm not really digging this blocky cutaway on the back. That's something else that makes this Telecaster different. I'm pretty sure I've talked about this before on a Made in Japan Telecaster, but it, it just doesn't seem to be right unless you're like all the way down here, then you can kind of feel the benefits of that. But in the normal playing position for me, it doesn't do anything. And I always found these made in Japan Telecasters to be very extreme with the way that it's flat right here. And the last thing that kind of caught me off guard about this guitar is you've got that light purple pin striping, right? It goes along here, around here. I was curious if you would see it underneath the pick guard, but oh it disappears on the top horn. <laughs> That's kind of a letdown in my opinion. I would have rather it go all the way, but, but hey, maybe Sue knows something that I don't. So let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench and take a look at its individual parts and specs. 
Inside the Silent Siren Telecaster, let's take a look at this thing. It's actually pretty well specced. So your body here is made of alder. And unfortunately, no, it is not a semi-hollow construction. They just painted it on that way, it completed the whole telly thin line vibe with this pick guard. I think it would have been cool had they had chambered it and not put the F hole in there, but eh, maybe they'll do that for another signature guitar. And just kind of as I was expecting, that light violet line does end as soon as the pick guard hits. They're like, nope, not doing it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that was a stylistic design of the artist or if they just thought they could save themselves some money. And as far as modding potential, you don't have a lot with this. You can only have a single coil in the neck, but you can switch any type of humbucker in here. But stock, we actually get a Fender Shaw Bucker pickup. That's actually pretty nice. Then the neck pickup, they call it a vintage single coil, so that should have a familiar sound. But what I'm really happy to see here is you have full-size CTS pots in there. Some of the Made in Japan ones, they don't always have that. So as far as specs go, I'm actually pretty impressed with this thing. And it is a three-way toggle switch and you have a white topper right there. It looks like our cavity routes are nice and clean, but something I wanted to point out is the buffing polishing compound is like the almost the same color as the pin striping. So I thought that was just kind of an interesting thing. I'll leave it there because it's a nice vibe to this guitar if you ever take it apart. But the pickguard itself is just one ply and the bridge is just one of those older style ones with the vintage style saddles. As far as our pickup readings go, the middle position, 3.52, just the bridge, 7.17, and in the neck, it's not too different, 6.73. Besides the whole all white finish thing, having an HS setup is like the most unique thing about this guitar because you do not find that very often. I'm really interested to try that out though because one of my favorite combinations in a Gibson is a humbucker in the bridge and a P90 in the neck. So that's not quite the same thing, but I bet we'll get a very similar vibe. So moving on from the alder body, we have a normal maple neck and this is a maple fretboard underneath here. Now the spec sheets call this stuff perloid white dot. These things certainly don't look like any perloid material that I've seen before. It almost looks like abalone to me, but if it's on the spec sheet, it must be on the spec sheet. They just must have put some really nice stuff on here because it really does look like the real deal to me. But they're using 21 narrow tall frets on this guy and they're using the nine and a half inch fretboard radius. I mean, how does it feel to play this? I mean, it's just like a regular maple fretboard. They just kind of have a finish over top of it. And as far as QC goes, you can see right here, there's like a little bit of chipping to the finish on the fretboard. I mean, it's nothing too crazy, but they did a pretty good job of getting the finish off of the frets. I mean, there's still a few locations that you can see that at, but they definitely had to take some extra time with this because they can't let just any lacquer over top of the frets because it's white this time, right? Our bone nut here, it measures 1.64. I think that's a little bit skinnier than most tellies, isn't it? I don't know. It's been a while since I've had one and 2.02 .02 at the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.9 and 0.94 by the 12th, so that stays very consistent. Fender calls this their slim C neck shape profile. You can see it starts really rounded right there and then it kind of flattens out. But moving on to the face of the headstock here, nothing too much going on here. A single string tree, you have truss rod adjustment in there and you have Fender branded tuners on here. But what I really appreciate here is take a look at that Fender logo. Instead of being gold, it's actually a silver color. So it kind of matches the whole all white vibe of this, but still adds something special at the same time. Now, moving on to the back of this thing. Once again, string through with the fair rules. You've got the blocky cutaway, but everything else, you know, it's pretty much typical Telecaster here as far as the Made in Japans go. You have the barrel output jack, standard buttons on the bottom. Then your other one is right up here on the top. But they do get a special little back plate right here that reads Silent Siren. I think what would have been cool is if they would have moved this up and then did a silhouette of Sue on there. But I guess then they would have had to done separate ones for the Telecasters and separate ones for the bass. But here's where things get interesting. The back of the neck also has that thick poly finish over it. And unfortunately, there is a slight discoloration within the finish. I thought maybe that was just some dirt or grime, but I just polished this up. So it looks to me like somebody was handling it and then they put that final clear coat over top of it or something. Is it super noticeable? Eh, not really, but you can see it now that you know about it. That's honestly the first time I've seen it just looking at it on the bench right here. But to the back of the headstock, you can see your serial number. This one's JD19018460, made in Japan, and that's her little signature. Now, I thought that looked like a little bear, but I think that's supposed to be her and she's got big hair and pigtails. I'm not sure. <laughs> And we've got those fender tuners, so everything is cool. Looks like we're about seven and a half pounds. Seven pounds, 7.6 ounces. So let's go ahead, plug this thing in and hear how it sounds.
that we know all about Sue's Silent Siren Telecaster, what are my final thoughts on this thing? I'm really happy I took the chance and imported one of these things. It was definitely a lot more expensive than the initial 112,500 yen price, which roughly like 1100 bucks US. But the cost to ship one of these, once you pay your import duties and taxes and all that other stuff, you're anywhere between 14 to 16, depending on your country. But I had a great time with this thing. It speaks to me visually, it's super unique, and the tones out of this thing, I really like it. So your neck pickup, it's kind of like your traditional Telecaster stuff. It's a little bit twangy, but when you go to that bridge, it's more familiar like Gibson-esque territory. It's still got some bite and spank to it, but just not quite as much as like the single coil variation. So it really is kind of similar to that P90 humbucker combination like in a BFG. But that middle position, when you blend the two of them, that's when things get really fun here. For the most part, it seems to be very well built. I mean, we had a few small finish mishaps here and there, but I'm impressed with the specs of this thing and the way that it feels and sounds. And another reason why I like this guitar is it kind of took me into a world that I don't normally travel into. There were definitely some interesting Silent Siren riffs out there. I just learned two of the songs. So if I had to do it all over again, would I? Yes, yes I would. The only thing I wish is they would have given them a case that had blue interior. Because just look at this. Isn't it such a beautiful sight the way that that complements each other? It's like a beautiful cloud in a bright blue sky. As far as the blacklight test, here's what we've got. The humbucker ring really glows super brightly. And in person, the white finish doesn't do too much glowing, but it looks like it is just because it's the white finish. So that's kind of an interesting sight that you won't see too often. But it definitely passes our blacklight test. Not that you're really going to find anything on a brand new guitar, though. I hope you troglodytes enjoyed getting to learn about the Silent Siren Telecaster. I had a great time with this one, so if you need help importing one, I might be able to help you, but I think most of these are pretty well sold out at this point, at least from the dealers that will ship internationally. So thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Oh, and Fender, if you're watching this video, I think you guys need to do a limited edition USA release of this one because there's a lot of people that dig this and you're missing out on a lot of sales. Take care.